give you some scriptures that you'll want to use uh, for people at work and people who ask you questions about this. Hello. All right. Everybody pay attention now. Nobody else getting up. Okay. Thank you very much. Don't forget, choir practice, 445 today. Don't forget, men's prayer meeting, 730 tomorrow night. You can bring everybody. Can't come, I understand. We've got a big week coming up. But uh, then we're going to have church Wednesday night. But Frankie Hunt be here the first night. And uh, then coming on in, Barry Spears, Cody Zorn. And you don't want to miss these preachers. All right. Now, this morning... I'm going to show you how the situation got like it is in Israel. So here we go. You want me to see this on the news? They're, they're very, very either ignorant or just political. And they've been saying on every news channel, boy, this fight between them Jews and them Palestinians... It, every news channel, they say the same. It's like they're pro. Somebody's telling them what to say. This fight's been going on for decades. And that, that is so ridiculously ignorant of the situation that it, it's sad. This fight's been going on for thousands of years. Thousands. It's Ishmael and Jacob. Abraham had two sons. I'll show you in a minute. He had Ishmael by Hagar. Remember the handmaid? That that was, he tried to, he got ahead of God and didn't wait on the Lord. And they had Hagar, she was an Egyptian. Ishmael is the father of all the, Muhammad, all the Muslims, that whole group with, that we call Palestinians. Actually, there's no such thing as a Palestinian. There's no such thing as a Palestinian state. There's a state of Israel. Palestinian was a name they tried to give that land that we'll talk about this morning. All right, all right, Jeremy, go ahead. I'm going to get you a picture here, and let's, let's go over briefly what's going on here from a Christian, biblical point of view. You ready? All right. Now, I want you to look first here this, this morning. This is that little strip of land right here. Now, you, you know where you're at on the map. Down here is Africa. Over here is the Middle East. Up there is uh, Europe. And way across the ocean, this other land, and way over here is the United States where me and you at. So this little land, piece of land right here is a land that they're, they're fighting over. Now let's go over a little history of this just a second here this morning. And I'm going to go slow to begin with so you can get that. Uh, it's, it's a, it's a, this country, Israel, is surrounded by Jordan, Iraq, Syria, Lebanon, and then Egypt over here. Originally, this piece of land right here is a part of Israel also. That's very important. Remember that. Now. You see these colors in here? That, that red is Palestine, Palestinian government. The yellow is disputed Israel. White is Israeli military control. And Israeli government is in the light blue, the big, big majority of it. Now, these Palestines, there's, the, there's that little piece of land called the Gaza Strip. That's what they call Gaza. It's in the Bible 19 times. Uh, this is the West Bank you hear them talking about the Dead Sea, and all this land here. They're fighting over. Now, the, 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 the Muslims, the Palestinians, believe that that's their land. And the Israel, the Jews, believe it's their land. And both, neither one of them are give, willing to give up an inch of it. All these talks about we're going to split it up and give half to them, half to them, it'll never work. Bin Laden said that there'll never be one inch of that ground give up as long as there's one Muslim in the world alive. They believe death to Israel and death to America because America, for the most part, has been a supporter and ally of Israel. Now, uh, that, that being said, let's move along here this, this morning and let's bring a little history here uh, how this all got started. This land had been fought over. There's the Mediterranean Sea, the Dead Sea. That right there is what's called the West Bank. That's the Gaza Strip that they're all uh, over there. This is where them rockets were fired uh, these rockets were fired out of here, right up here to Ashkelon. That's where they got hit the other day. It ain't just a few miles up the road here. Jerusalem's way over here. Now watch this. There, that's where the, the tanks are firing from Palestine toward the Jews. Now this started long, 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 long time ago. Way over here. This is Africa. This is at the Mediterranean Sea. 
in the land we're talking about. See those land? They're God, that's a picture, that ain't really God, but you know, it represents him, of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And God made a covenant with Abraham. And you know what God told Abraham? He said, I'll bless you and your seed. And he said, I'll bless them that bless you, and I'll curse them that curse you. But his promises all, this is very important you get this, all the promises of God to Abraham come through Jacob, not Ishmael. He, Galatians chapter 4 said Ishmael was a son of a bondmaid, but Isaac uh, uh, was a son of promise. And so his son, Jacob, the word Jacob means Israel, and that's where the 12 tribes come from. And God gave each one of them what? This is, this is uh, past 1700 B.C. Now, so they owned that land that God gave them. Matter of fact, they own every bit of that right in there. It's not included in this picture. Now, looky here. That land right there is what they're fighting over this morning. This land right here is originally part of it. Now, I, I went in Sunday school. I don't have time to go through all this again. But there is in the Bible what we call the law of first mention. And the law of first mention means however something's mentioned the first time in the Bible usually carries throughout the Bible and history. Like, there's probably not a, there's probably not a, a, a beer joint in Morganton where the owner knows where the word beer come from. There's probably not an ABC store or a tavern here in this town where the owner knows where the word beer comes from. It comes from number 16. First time it's mentioned, beer. It means a well. People say, I drink a well dry. That's what that word beer comes from. That's first mention. The number 13. You know the first time the number 13 mentioned in the Bible? It's in Genesis 14, where it said they served Chedorlaomer for 12 years, and the 13th year they rebelled. So the first time the word 13 is mentioned, it's connection with rebellion. And that's why it's been bad all these years through history. The number 13, number 13. We're not superstitious, and I don't, I'm, I don't, I, I, I know Halloween's of the devil. I understand that. But there is definitely a, a connection between the number 13 and rebellion. The way you get a 13-year-old, you know what I'm talking about. And that's exactly right. And, and so uh, that, that, that's the number 13, the first time it's mentioned in the Bible. The word love. 99% of the people in this town have no idea what the love, word love means or where it comes from. Hollywood, I was like, love, love, I'm in love, she's in love, she's in love, he's in love, oh, she's found her a new love, she's a man, woman, uh, that, that ain't what the word love means. The first time the word love is mentioned in the Bible is Genesis 22. And you know what he said? God told Abraham to take his son, thine only son, whom thou lovest. You need to learn something that, people. The first time the word love mentioned is a father's love for his son and giving him as a sacrifice. And that's why First John said, herein is love. Not that we love God, but that he loved us and gave us his son for us. Man, you can't beat that thing with a stick. First time it's mentioned. And all the way through history, the greatest example of love is a man who loves the world enough to give his son for him. God. Now, the number 13. I've told you. The word love. The word sinners. You know the first time the word sinners is mentioned in the Bible? It's in Genesis 13, 13. And he's talking about Sodom and Gomorrah. Think about that for a few weeks and study it. Now, the first time the word holy is mentioned in the Bible is right here. It's not in Genesis. Nothing in Genesis was said to be holy. The first time the word holy is mentioned in the Bible, the man standing right here, this is included in that land then, I'll show you in a minute, and he's standing there and he saw a bush on fire, and the Lord looked down and said, Boy, Take your shoes off. For that land that you stand on is holy ground. Amen? That's why they call it the holy land, people. God said that ground was holy. It's weird because he had just cursed the ground in Genesis. He told Adam, curse it as the ground for thy sake. So God cursed the ground. Then he turned right around and said, that right there is holy ground. So all of this right here belongs to God and the descendants of Jacob. Every bit of it. They're not one Muslim owns one piece of this property. There's no Palestinian owns any bit of this. They, they're saying we own it and we were to do. All right? Look here. Now let's go a little bit further. 1700 B.C. This is called the land of Israel, the Holy Land, or the land of Canaan in the Bible. Egypt was once my home. 
I was a slave. I'm living in Canaan now. 1000 BC comes in King Saul and the, and the uh, Israel, Israeli kingdom. Then his son David and then King Solomon. 1000 BC, see right here what they've done? They built the first temple. They built that first temple on Mount Moriah over there. Uh, Mount Sinai is over here. Mount Moriah is right there. It's also called, uh, it's also called Zion, Mount Zion by, by some. But it's Mount Moriah. That's the spot where Abraham uh, was going to offer his son. And that's the spot where uh, so many significant things happened. The highest point there. So he builds this temple in 1000 B.C. This is a thousand years before Jesus came the first time. Bill of King Solomon. After he died, the kingdom split. You remember that reading your Bible? If you read your Bible and you talk about uh, the two kingdoms, the kingdom of Israel, the kingdom of Judah. They split. Samaria was the capital of Israel. And Jerusalem was the capital of Judah. That's why it always, when you read the Old Testament, it will say, woe unto thee, Samaria, woe unto thee. That's what he's talking about. The kingdom was split in two during that, that period of time. 900 B.C. All right, let's look here. In 63 B.C., the Romans came in, served, and they tried to name the whole land Palestine to discourage the Jews from being there. And they built, in 636, Muhammad come along, come along, started the Muslim faith. Muhammad couldn't read and write. He was illiterate. He just told somebody what, the, what the, he thought was right, and they wrote it down. That's where the Koran come from. And so they decided that they was going to build a mosque. You see them pictures on TV, that big old gold dome over there? That's, that's, that's on the Temple Mount. When they, dis, when they destroyed the temple in 70 AD, it was leveled. And so the, the Muslim comes in, and they build this thing on there in 636. That's a long time ago. 1,500 years, something like that. Years ago, and it's still sitting there today, right on top of the Temple Mount. That's why you hear so many preachers talking about the third temple, the next temple. Because during the tribulation, there will be another temple, and there'll be offering sacrifices in it. The Antichrist will go in there and sit down and offer a sacrifice on that temple, and that's called the abomination of desolation. And many Bible teachers, I don't know if this is true or not, believe that he will offer pig's blood on the altar, and that's when the Jews' eyes are going to be open and say, uh-uh. You ain't him. I'm getting out of here. Then let them which be in time during the tribulation. All right. Let's move along here. Uh, uh, I'll bring you up to date here, and then I'm going to say a few more remarks here uh, before we go. So we got uh, three world religions. Judaism. That's old Jews. That with the Jews that are Orthodox Jews today. Christianity. Jesus died on the cross right there. He was crucified there in Jerusalem, right outside of it. And Islam. And they all three claim this one spot right here is their holy spot. Isn't that something? How amazing is that? They're all concentrated on that one spot. There are people that believe the Ark of the Covenant is buried. I don't. But there are people that believe that's how significant that it is. Now, with those three religions, I mean, you know, when you're learning school and he's uh, crazy people get online and say, well, religion caused all the world war and all that. And that is partly true, but Christians don't start wars. Real Christians don't start wars. The only way a Christian fights is if we have to. And you can't blame Jesus and real Christians for all the wars uh, in, in the world. Won't work. Now, as these got scat uh, scattered around, the Jews got scattered around when Nebuchadnezzar came in and carried them captive. That's in Daniel. Nebuchadnezzar, kept Dan the Babylonian captivity. That's over there in Iraq. That's where Babylon is. Now, look at here. This was called Ottoman Empire. This was a, a, a Palestinian group that ruled all that area there for many, 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 many years. In 1517 up to 1917. And then all those Jews got persecuted. They started going back. They come out of them territories where the Ottoman Empire was coming. In the 20th century, they started coming back. Now, the British run this area. Here's the area we're talking about this morning. Uh, and the French, up until 1918, the green Italian, or French zone, the, this color is, is uh, British, Russian, and the international zone. So it was, it was purple. That was called Palestine by them. Now, the, they finally had to get out. The British left in 1919. And in 1923, the 
1921, they had a British mandate for Palestine. And in 23, they called it the Balfour Declaration. You heard about that in school. And that was British people giving the Jews partial rights for that land right there to live in. They try to split it again. It never will work trying to split that land up. Because Ishmael believes it's his and Isaac believes it's his. Now, after the, the Balfour Declaration, we're moving on up now. We're in 1923. I've skipped a lot of stuff. Israel and Arabs fighting each other, fighting each other, fight. 1928, 1937, 1938, and then come the Holocaust. That was when Hitler come to power right there in, in the late 30s, early 40s, and 6 million Jews were gassed, murdered, killed in the awfulest atrocities that the world had ever seen to that time. Now, you got to be careful because they're Jews, brown-skinned people that they were. Uh, now, you got to be careful and resist that. Because, ah, them Jews are. You know why Gentiles don't like Jews? Because Gentiles love money and Jews can make money. You ever noticed, did you know that uh, one quarter of the diamonds in the world are finished and polished and made in, in Israel? One fourth of the world, man, the diamonds. How they do that? They're smart. They're smart. I ain't never heard nobody say this, but I've noticed for years. Have you ever noticed how the word Jew looks like jewel? J-E-W-E-L. You know, they say you can take a, take, back in the old days, they say you can take a Jew, set him out downtown on a corner and come back two weeks later and he owns a department store. And God has given them the, 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 uh, the knowledge, the smart man, the brilliant. And we will, that, that happened. When that happened, they all started wanting to go back home. And all the preachers started preaching. There goes all the Jews back home, back down here to Jerusalem. And the, but them Palestinians are waiting on them, buddy. And it's fight, 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 fight. 1947, there was called an Arab state and a Jewish state. And Jerusalem was called neutral. And that ain't going to work. Because the Jews are going to say, nope, it's ours. And the Palestinians are going to say, nope, it's ours. So you got this. I want you to know it's the hand of God here. In 1948, you know what took place? They supposedly divided it up, but the Arabs said no. They got 56% and we got 44 so we, don't, we, don't, we ain't going for a deal like this. We're going to keep fighting. And in 1948, the bombs started going off, blowing everybody up, and Israel declared itself a state for the first time in like 1,500 years. There was a state of Israel. That's why all the Bible prophecy teachers and all of them say the Israel got back in the homeland. The little flag went up in May, and Israel was declared a state again for the first. That that has happened in history. No other group has ever done anything like that back in there. I mean, you can't find a you can't find uh, a uh, uh, is that now? Look, they declared themselves a state, and look what happened with this. It turned. Here's how it out. The 1948 wars and Israel declaring their self-state wound up with Israel controlling more property than there was to start with. Except for this war, this Arab-Israeli war. This is Gaza. This is the West Bank. And then this war of 1948 started. Now watch all these countries start and come down on Israel. All these. Egypt, Jordan, Iraq, Syria. All them are... Islamic countries, and they're converging on. You remember that scripture that Jesus said, when you see Jerusalem compassed with armies? That's happened over and over and over and over and over. Jerusalem's been destroyed twice and been besieged 20-something times and has been attacked over 50 times, people. Do you know what the name Jerusalem means? City of peace. Shalom. Shalom means peace. City of peace. Jerusalem. Good night. There so ain't been no peace there yet. They ain't been but 260-something years of peace since the world started, they say. So it's all future. It's going to be. It's going to be. You know when there'll be peace in Jerusalem? When the Prince of Peace comes, makes it like that. That's coming. Now, this war began here. By the way, the Dead Sea, you want to study this when you get home? You need to go back and listen to this probably a bunch of times. I'm spitting out a lot at you. Uh, the Dead Sea is full of wealth 
and minerals. The Dead Sea, the reason they call it the Dead Sea is because nothing will live in the Dead Sea. The water is so thick that you can throw an egg in it and it'll float. They say, that's why people go from all over the world to lay in the Dead Sea because it's got all that salt in it. It's called the Salt Sea and it heals what's wrong with you and they think it has special healing powers. And did you know, you say, well, how come it don't, how come it don't get full? The same amount of water evaporates as coming into it. It ain't got no outlet. Isn't that weird? Water keeps coming in, coming in, coming in, but it don't go out. And the mineral deposits keep getting deeper and deeper in there. You know, you know how low the Dead Sea is? Do you know the, that the Dead Sea is at the lowest place on earth? You know what the, you know what the, how deep the, uh, the bottom of the Dead Sea is? Probably 1,300 feet. 1,300 feet below sea level, the lowest place on earth. And they say that right in there is where Sodom and Gomorrah was. Just giving you something about lowest place on earth. I didn't write it. That's some book we got there, people. Amen. That's some book. Look here. Let's move on to up to present day. 1948. That's uh, these, they begin to fight, 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 try to run the Jews. This is their symbol out of, out of Israel. Fight. Over here is Egypt. Over there is Jordan. And they fought, and they fought. 1949. And then come the Six-Day War. Look what happened at the Six-Day War. Who in the world ever heard of a war that only lasted six days? And all these groups come in to attack Jerusalem and say, we're going to wipe them out. And six days later, see, this is, that yellow in there is Palestinian-controlled people uh, land in the, in the West Bank here. Look here what happened at the Six-Day War. All these countries, all five of them or four of them, came in to fight Jerusalem. Watch what happens. 1967, back when the hippies and the Beatles and everybody was singing, there's all jumping on Israel, and when it's over, Israel controls all this land. And that's what makes a lot of people say, there's a higher power helping them people. There's no way one little bitty tiny group of people could fight off five countries. You know what the Lord said? He said, I'll defend Jerusalem as birds flying. I don't know if that's symbolic of all them planes or not. Could be. I'll show you it in the Bible in a minute. As birds flying, I'll defend Jerusalem and Israel. So the Lord was fighting for them, evidently. He said, they're wicked as the devil. I know that. I know that. I understand that. They had the Lord crucified. I got it. And they, they made a mistake. They said, his blood be on us and on our children. And son, it has. There's where they really made their mistake by rejecting Messiah. But that God is not through with them yet. He's not through with them yet. Watch this. There's the Golden Heights. There's the West Bank. Israel controlled all of it. They finally give this part back under Egypt control. That's where Moses stood on holy ground. And they give it back to them. Then in 1967, that happened. I showed you. That was the Six-Day War. And boy, I mean, tell you, it, it got on. And Israel won that war. And it was amazing. Then the Palestinian liberal war, uh, the PLO. That's what they always call it on the news. They arose to try to to try to get rid of Israel out of there. Over here in Jordan, fired rockets at it, fired rockets at it. See, see, there ain't nowhere for these people to go. They can't go out in the ocean. They can't go up into here. They're surrounded by their enemies. And then these groups got to fighting each other and fighting Israel. The, the PLO moved down here, and, and they had war. The, the, the Muslims started fighting each other because they had a truck wreck there and killed some, uh, they killed some Arabs or Muslims, and this little war broke out between them there, and you had two Muslim groups fighting each other and fighting Israel at the same time. It's fight, 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 fight. That's all they've ever done. Now, while all this is going on right here, here's me and you right up under, right in there. See Florida right there? There's where me and you live, right there in that little spot. Over here safe and sound, we think. Uh, and these two treaties were signed, one in Washington, one in Egypt, to finally bring peace to the Middle East in 1987, and it did not work. There's what they come up with. Let the Arabs control this, the Jews control that. And Ariel Sharon, he was the leader of Israel. He called it the second intifada. That means the, uh, this, I'll bring this up to date in a minute. That means them groups fighting each other. Now Hamas. Who's Hamas? Here we are again. There's Africa. There's Europe. There's where Noah's 
Noah landed at Mount Ararat, and he had three boys got out of that ark. One went here, that's Shem, Shemitic, Eastern. One went north, Europe, that's Japheth. One went south, to Africa, that's Ham. They ain't but three races, and they're all members of the human race, and there's where they all three came from. Now, back in Israel again now. These groups are fighting each other and fighting Israel. The PLO, the uh, uh, groups fighting, two Muslim groups firing at each other, firing at Israel, and they're blocked in here on the Gaza Strip. And 2007 now, we're at 2007, coming on up in history, 2008. Look at all these things. You think there's going to be peace over there? 2009, Operation Cast Lead, Lead, Operation Pillar Defense, Operation Protection. All these are wars. 2014, that's just a few years ago. We started back with Abraham in, in uh, nearly 2,000 years before Jesus. So look here. Uh, they're fighting. They finally made an agreement, and the agreements never last. That, and in 2018, the embassy was moved from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem. Now, we had one president had enough guts to do that. Every president that ever got elected said, I'm going to move the embassy to uh, George Bush, Jimmy Carter, all, and none of them never did do it. They all never do it. And when they got, when it got moved here, and I, Dr. Ruckman said back in 2003, he said, if they ever move that embassy, he said they should, but he said, but ain't none of them politicians got enough guts to do it. This is in 2003. And he said, if they ever do, boy, you better look out then. All right, that happened uh, in 2018, right before the coronavirus hit. And the embassy is now in Jerusalem. That showed American favoritism toward the Jews. And the bombs started coming again right out of the Gaza Strip. That's exactly what they're doing over there this morning. They're fighting right in here, right in here, right in here. And all it is is this, people. It's a ticking time bomb. And all I can tell you is according to the Bible, in case of rain, the war will be held in the auditorium. Because, buddy, it's going to get worse. And the Bible says... The time of Jacob's trouble. Give me the lights now. The Bible talks about the time of Jacob's trouble. Not Ishmael's, Jacob's. And God's going to whip Israel really, really good. Now, get the Bible out. And let's look at a, little, a few scriptures here. I've already covered most of it. But uh, you'll look here. The word Israel is mentioned over 2,000 times in the Bible. The word Gaza is mentioned 19 times. And the word war, oh my goodness, over 200 and. 50 something times. Abraham was the first Jew. Now, I went through the law of first mention. Now, turn to Psalm 2, the book of Psalm, chapter 2. I'm not supporting Jewish wickedness and Jewish, uh, they kill, have the Messiah. I'm, I'm, I'm preaching the Bible, okay? If, if, you, uh, if you are a, uh, uh, you know, we're having protests all over America this morning in Harvard, in Michigan, in California of people supporting the Palestinians all over the country. Uh, that's not a very smart thing to do, people. That's not a very smart thing to do. He said, he that toucheth you, touch the apple of my eye. Let me show you what the Lord said. Here in Psalm 2, Psalm 2, look at it. He said, why the heathen rage? People imagine a vain thing. Verse 2, the kings of the earth, Set themselves, to, uh, set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord against his anointed saying let us break their bands asunder and cast away their cords from us he that sits and shall laugh the Lord shall have them in derision you say God wouldn't laugh at somebody that's because you've been worshiping that little Santa Claus God he said I'll mock when your fear comes I'll laugh at your calamity then shall he speak to them in his wrath and vex them in his sore displeasure verse 6 yet have I Set my king upon my holy hill, Mount Zion. God owns that land. Take your Bible. Turn to uh, Isaiah chapter 31. Isaiah chapter 31 this morning. He said, well, Brother Danny, how in the world can you support? I'm not supporting their sinning. I'm not supporting their wickedness. They might, they say, there's over our party. And when that bomb started hitting, there's over our getting drunk and living like the devil. I don't support that at all. We ain't talking about that. We're talking about the Bible and what's going on. Isaiah 31. Look at Isaiah 31 and verse number, oh, I guess, number 5. Look at Isaiah 31 and 5. As birds flying, so will the Lord of hosts defend Jerusalem. The Lord will defend Jerusalem. So you got 3,000 die in a plague, 23,000 die in a plague, 
And look at this. Jeremiah 25. Turn to Jeremiah. Right over to your right just a little bit. In verse number 25. Psalm, uh, Jeremiah, Jeremiah uh, 25 and verse 15. For thus saith the Lord God of Israel unto me, of Israel, 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 not Ishmael, not, not Muslim, not Muhammad, Israel. Take the wine cup of this spirit in my hand, cause all the nations, to whom I send thee to drink it. All the nations, that includes us. That includes every nation that comes against them. I showed it to you in Sunday school. The Lord said he'd make a full end of all America ever officially turns our back on Israel. We sign our death warrant. You say, they're wicked. Yeah, I know that. That's right. And that's for the Lord to straighten out. I'll show you that in a minute before we get done here. Philistia, Exodus 15. Uh, usually, I try to, here's what I always do. In any issue that comes up, find out who the news media is for and take the other side. That's a standard way of belief, and that's usually true. And this is a little bit different because a lot of politicians who hate Israel are on TV taking a stand for Israel because of politics. You don't give billions of dollars worth of ammunition to Iran and then say, we support Israel. So you, you, you got to sift through the junk. You know what I'm talking about? Some of y'all looking at me, they're like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. good, good. I hope you'll go home and study and leave that phone off for a little while. Amen. Be good for you. Uh, and get in the Word of God. Now, did you know that Gaza has 300 miles of underground tunnels in it? Underground tunnels, like rats and gophers living underground. Them people, them people, that's all they've ever known is fight, 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 fight. And they're living in them little old tunnels, ain't that big. And they're living there, I'm telling you, it's, the atrocities are unbelievable. That's why those. Those terrorists that bombed Israel the other day are hiding out right now, probably somewhere, unless they flew off to Jordan or somewhere like that. Now, uh, Netanyahu, Benjamin Netanyahu, born in Tel Aviv, the Jewish parents, wound up as a kid coming over here and living in Philadelphia for a while, wound up back in there, and uh, he's, he's the leader of them right now. They broke the covenant with God. They didn't do what God wanted them to do. You break a covenant by shedding innocent blood, by worshiping idols and immorality. Now, the occupation, when you say this is Israel occupying, them poor Arabs are just fighting for their land, and Israel come in here and took it up. No, no, that's not, that's not the way it goes. It's the other way around. God gave that land to them to begin with. And the occupation is just that. Now, in closing this morning, I want to say this. The stage is being set in the world this morning like I've never seen it in my life for the, for the world, the Antichrist. Because right now, they're not going to give in and they're not going to give in. Them Muslims ain't going to say, sorry, we'll let you have it. It ain't going to happen. They'll fight to the death. And the Jews ain't either. There's only one answer. There's got to be somebody that can bring peace and bring everybody together. And guess what? He's coming. He's coming. And when he comes, the Muslim will think, oh my goodness, you're, you're the long-awaited reincarnation of Muhammad. And the, and the Jews will think, you're the promised Messiah. And he'll make a covenant with them for one week. That's seven years. The definition of a week and prophecy is seven years. Back in Genesis. It, the guy had worked for his wife seven years. He worked for that wife seven years. And they slipped the wrong one in on him. And you know what he said? I, you got to work seven more years for that. Fulfill her week. So a week, seven years. And he'll make a covenant with Israel for seven years. And they'll say, okay, you're the Messiah. You're the one we've been waiting on. I knew it wasn't Jesus. We've done the right thing by crucifying him. Here's the Messiah. And he'll be able to bring peace and bring a one world government. And everybody's going to be doing fine. They'll say peace and safety. And then the Bible said sudden destruction shall come upon them as travail upon a woman with child. And Moses and Elijah will be out preaching on, uh, on the street. And they're going to cut their heads off. I used to read that in the Bible and I'd say, people don't cut their heads off no more. Oh, yeah? They said the people were a soldier holds a baby's head right here, and the other soldier holds the head, and the third soldier picked up and cuts that baby's head off. That's barbaric, people. That's terrible. That's not normal war. And I'm telling you, the stage is being set. So Elijah and Moses, cut your heads off. And lo and behold, the Spirit of God gets back in them, and they stand up. And the Antichrist goes in there and sits down and says, I'm offering a pig's blood. And the Jews say, You're a crook. 
God told us not to offer swine's blood. We're out of here. And brother, the time of Jacob's trouble began and the world is being set for that. And then at the end of that, the battle of Armageddon, that great day of God Almighty there in, uh, in uh, Revelation chapter 16. And then finally, brother, when all that bloodshed, bloodshed runs up to the horse's bridle over there for all them miles down through there. And about that time in Revelation 19 verse 11, the Bible said, I saw heaven open and behold a white horse and they that were with him upon white horses. Lady came to the priest and said, what do you think that white horse represents? He said, a white horse. And uh, they come, and boy, here will come. The armies of heaven will come with the Lord. And he said, well, well uh, preacher, I don't believe that. Well, get it right. Get it right, brother. And he shall reign a thousand years upon the throne of David. And boy, the Antichrist will be thrown into the in the lake uh, in the hell in the lake of fire uh, there. And they'll be they'll be all you know what's going to break loose. And ladies and gentlemen, the stage is being set for that right now. Now it may be twenty years. It may be fifty years. We don't know how things are going to work out, but it may be much sooner than that. Well, nobody knows. I know one thing. I know one thing. Our book tells us how it started. Our book tells us how it's going. And our book tells us how it's going to end. Thank God for the blessed old book. You got your eyes open this morning. Most people don't. My advice to you is go soul winning. People ask me all week, what can we do? Pray and get your heart right and go win some souls. Amen. Let's stand with our heads bowed. Every head bowed. Every eyes closed. Nobody's moving. Nobody's talking. Will you let God speak to your heart this morning? You say, Brother Danny. Come on, Miss Desi. Play something softly. Every head bowed and every eyes closed. You're living at the jumping off place, people. Your time of partying is about over. There's thousands and thousands coming across our borders every week that believe the same people believe. She's playing softly this morning. Every head is bowed and every eye is closed. I wonder how many this morning would just slip right out of your seat, slide down here and meet this all of this morning and just say, Lord, I want to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. I'm going to pray for the poor little kids in Palestine. Those poor little kids in Gaza. They didn't do nothing. They didn't deserve get blowed up. They didn't deserve they didn't, the innocent people. Lord have mercy y'all. There's ever been a time when we need camp meeting. It's now. There's ever been a time when we need to seek the Lord. It's now. Come on. Come on. Let's just get in here and pray. This is it. I'm I'm done. I, I'm done. Now's your chance. Come on right now. Come on. Let's just slide in this altar this morning and say, you know what preacher? I'm going to get back in here. I'm going to get on fire for God. I'm going to quit playing around. I'm going to quit messing around and playing church. Lord help us. You know the, the Lord's coming back people. The Lord's coming back. Are you ready? If He came right now, would you be ready? If He came today, would you be ready? Seek you the Lord while He may be. Are you winning souls? Then hush. If you ain't, just hush. You ain't got no business criticizing everybody else in the world if you ain't winning some souls. Best thing you can do is go soul winning. Get you a tract, handful of tracts, and go to Walmart. And witness to everybody you come in contact. Everybody that lives on your neighborhood. Witness, witness, go into all the world and witness every creature. That's what you need to do. Amen. Father, I pray right now in Jesus' name that you'd have mercy upon us. We thank you, Lord. We're just this little old spot. Lord, I'm, you said that the branches were broken off that we might be grafted in. And I sure do thank you this morning. We got to get grafted in. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And I, I know, Lord, that uh, you haven't made a full end. You're not done with your people over there. I pray that your will be done. Help them all. I live for you, Lord. You said, uh, yet all Israel shall be saved. And, and you said, I'll bring them back. And, and uh, you said, I'll, I'll start, take away ungodliness from Jacob. And Lord, that ain't happened yet. We know it's going to happen in the future. I pray, God, you'd help us to live for you every day and serve you. God, do what ought to be done in every life. Bless everybody here. Help us, Lord, to have the right slant on this stuff going on. And go out of here this morning like never before. An army for God. All Christian soldiers fight the battle you've given us to fight. Do what in their life. We'll thank you for it. We love you. In Jesus' name. So I'm still praying this morning. We're going to get ready to leave. Amen, amen, amen. Amen, hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Amen.
All right, you say this morning, you say, what can I do, preacher? Grab your handful of track, put your bumper sticker on your car, fast, pray, bring somebody to church, win everybody you can. Because you know, thousands of people coming across the borders from Syria. They don't come from Mexico. And when that time comes, the cell phones are going to go off. You know that our cell phone had that big test like three days before this happened. You know that. You understand that, right? Listen, there's, there's more going on than you ain't going to get the news by watching the news. All you get on TV is what they want you to hear. It's all in control. You better take what the book says. Say what the book said. And that old book said, uh, God hath not cast away his people which he foreknew. What the book says. He's not. He's not done with Israel. He's not. I know I got friends who disagree on that strongly. God hath not forgot his people which he foreknew. He ain't. He ain't done with them. All right. Hallelujah. Had a good time this morning. Maybe you're a little smarter than you was when you left. Class, you are dismissed. Uh, everybody fellowship there a little bit. Choir be here at 445. 445, choir.